Yeah, yeah the thing about pimps is like they're gonna be with the girl, they might not even have sex with them till they give them. Yeah, because so you don't girl, lead, you can't lead. There's you don't lead with your penis, you lead with your mind, right? You know what I'm saying? There's no man in the history of man that has controlled a woman just with his penis. Like, you know, there's like pimps know like when they when they prostitutes go out there and have sex with different men, there's different sizes, different races with different sizes. There's different types of men. There's different types of energy. And what can you do with that? You'll be running yourself ragged, tripping off sex. <laughs> so the best thing you can do is get into a mental philosophy for yourself. And it starts with you. The woman pays attention to how much control you have over yourself. As soon as she sees that you a trick and you and you and you weak for her box and you weak for her, she got it's a you. Rap, huh? It's a rap. It's a rap. And it's a, I thought it was I felt like it was always the other way around too when it came to a girl who was looking for something in a man and they sleep with him on the first night. You hey, you ain't got nothing coming now. Cause well, you I know, feel like men work for that. And if you nigga, give it to me without work, it was <laughs> well, see that's but see flip that philosophy around. You actually hit the nail on the nail on the head when you just said that because everything in the universe is based on reward and punishment. Oh, everything is based on there's some form of compensation for what you put in. What you put in is what you get back. The law of rhythm tell you that rhythm compensates. Mm -hmm. The last line of the law of rhythm says that rhythm compensates, meaning that what you put in is what you get back. Okay. OK, so the reason why a lot of these men that's tricking and getting all that they need from their woman, they woman cussing them out. Man, I've went and cut entertainers. I ain't even going to say his name, but I was at his house one day giving him a haircut and his girl cussed him out in front of me. And I had to pull his coat to him and say, bro, you're going to have yeah. to like get that together, man. Let me tell you why. And, then, you know, and I usually don't say nothing to nobody, but the way she did it was so flagrant. Mm -hmm. And they was on TV, by the way. You know what I'm saying? Once upon a time, they ain't married no more. And that I know why. Because she, she didn't have respect for him. I was gonna say what you said to Anthony Anderson after that. Nah, nah Anthony, Anderson. <laughs> but you know, I never even met dude. But you know, <laughs> if, hey, but the cold part about it is the cold part about it is is that you know that happens because initially we don't set boundaries, man. We we go into the relationship thinking about sex and the the whole cute Cinderella action of the whole relationship, and we don't set boundaries, man. And and again, always look at your relationship like. When you're driving in the streets, the only way you can coexist next to another driver is because there's a certain amount of boundaries that yeah. says stay in your lane, nigga. And a lot of people don't stay in their lane and they come <laughs> over in your lane and it causes an accident. You see oh, what I'm saying? Man. It causes a problem. So, you know, it's the same philosophy with relationships. And if you haven't set boundaries, that's why, you know, as they tell you in the Bible, again, to check your faith daily. You have to sometimes sit with your woman. Where, hey, look, let's send the kids to mama house. Let's go to dinner and let's do things and don't make it like it's a big deal, but have conversations mm -hmm. like that with her and pull out the pad and pen and start writing things down and say, hey, you know, I, you know, I like when you do this. I don't like you. I don't like that. I need this. I need more of that. I want this. Boom, boom, boom. And you listen to her. Man, that's a beautiful relationship because at that point, now accountability is in front of you. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you what it is. You signing off on this and you understand what's going on. Now we both can be accountable for when we do things that go outside of those boundaries. That's why you got to have car insurance. You know, that's the car. That's the relationship insurance, hey. you know, to sign those boundaries after you write them down. She uh -huh. needs to sign it and you need to sign it. Hey. And then you put it up, make her a copy of it. That's your insurance. So when you pull that out on me and say, hey, we agreed to this, though, baby. Yeah, you're right. You know what? You're right. Hey. I'll do better. I'm going to check you myself. Said I'm going to check that. You said some real shit earlier, though. You were saying like, shit, you might even have to leave based off your principles if they if they ain't aligned with your principles. Like, yeah, yeah, most you guys will be like, a lot mm -hmm. of guys might just stay just because you know, still, but no, you gotta go. Nah, nah, nah. Yeah. You know, and, and and I'm not saying to be malicious about it. If you have children, you know, even in that scenario, even if you're there, you know, there's a form of reward and punishment that can take place with your woman, even if you're in the household with her, as you should be doing anyway, because if you don't implement reward and punishment with your children mm -hmm. and the women have the children. So psychologically, there's a lot of ways that women have that are they're not children, but they have the ways just like children. You have to implement reward and punishment. You have to when the, if she ain't acting right, if she ain't doing what you want to do. Get quiet. Get silent. Don't hit. Right. Don't yell. Don't scream. Now you're being emotional. As soon as you start arguing with her, when you argue with her, you turn into her homegirl. She look at you like, and she won't probably tell you this. Most women don't know this and won't tell you this. She be wondering why you don't want to touch you and won't want to want to have sex. And she's like, ugh, this nigga yelling and acting all emotional and tripping and screaming. Man, he ain't shower. Man.
Nigga, he, he brush his teeth. You don't do nothing. Look, man. I, you, Look, you, I've been through it, right man. I've been, I've been through it, man. You know what I'm saying? And I, I've had made those mistakes. And you arguing with your woman and going back and forth because she didn't push you to the limit. But, nah, that's not the way to do it. You always want to stay focused and control yourself. So you have to look at it the same way you raise your children. When you go off on them and scream and slap them in the face, that ain't doing nothing but causing problems for later on in their little lives as they grow into adults, you know, and then they got to go get help for that, you know. So it's the same philosophy. Control yourself. Think. Stay silent. Practice meditation and it'll help you with your relationship. Thanks.